So Brad Garlinghouse is here of Ripple was recently on and he said what's going to define crypto assets in 2020 is the utility value. Where on that curve between a store of wealth, something that you just hold and the mm -hmm. price goes up versus actually something that you can use Absolutely. is Bitcoin. Because a lot of the criticisms that I read, one, it's energy intensive. It uses a lot of energy. And two, in terms of transaction speeds, it's really slow. Yeah. So first, when it comes to the uh, energy consumption, uh, Bitcoin is using majority renewable energy, right? People are having input into that business, uh, a cost uh, that is the energy cost. And so what they're actually doing is they're going to find the lowest cost energy, which happens to be renewable. So we see things like gas flaring, uh, waste to energy, geothermal, hydroelectric, etc. So I think that's actually driving a lot of innovation. Is that true. I see a lot of criticism of that fact. Yeah, yeah. And if you go to China, I mean that's coal fuel. They are fossil fuel fueled um, energy. Yeah, so, so there's definitely some not renewable energy, but there's many studies that have now come public where 60, 70, 80 percent of the energy consumption is actually renewable energy. In right? total? In total, yeah. Wow. Absolutely. And then when it comes to utility on the transaction side, last year, the adjusted transaction volume on chain. So this is not exchange traded volume or anything like that. Actually, people sending it for one purpose or another uh, was o was over half a trillion dollars. And so what that means is it's bigger than Venmo, Apple Pay, PayPal, et cetera, in terms of transaction volumes. And so people as can- As long as you're not doing it too often, I guess the point. Well, so again, people can complain about transaction speeds, cost, et cetera. But at the end of the day, people are using this more than they're using Venmo, Apple Pay, and PayPal. As a store of wealth. So it's the, the biggest argument here for Bitcoin, the store of wealth. It definitely serves a purpose as a store of wealth. We've seen that do very well. It's up 30 percent this year. It's up 150 percent over the last 12 months. But people are also using it to transact and send it for one purpose or another to either businesses or to other individuals. Warren Buffett, very dismissive <laughs> yesterday. He said uh, shorting suitcases, i.e., you know, people laundering yep. money. Perhaps they're not going to use suitcases anymore. They're going to use things like digital assets, Bitcoin specifically. So my two things with Warren, uh, first of all, somebody should tell him that Wells Fargo, one of the uh, companies in his portfolio, uh, recently was found uh, guilty uh, of helping the Sanoa cartel launder a lot of money. So uh, I don't know necessarily. Fake accounts, I guess, would be the other have. I don't have yeah. necessarily proof on anything else, but obviously things like that with Wells Fargo have been a concern. <laughs> and the second thing is I don't really take technology advice from somebody who uses a flip phone or doesn't use email, right? Again, you shouldn't ask me for value investing advice. and so. He kind of has his domain, which he's the best what in the world. What you're saying at. is Warren Buffett doesn't get it, so stay out of it, basically. Uh, people will listen to his opinion because he's one of the best investors of all time. When it comes to technology, though, I think there's better people to listen to you're than Warren Buffett. You're saying he's behind the curve. Seriously behind the curve. <laughs> Talk to me about Sweden because yeah. they've launched a digital coin, or at least they're testing the testing phases. They are way more advanced, it seems, than than even uh, the Chinese who are clearly pumping a lot of money and investment time yeah. into this. So these central back digital currencies are all coming. And really what I think people need to understand is uh, all of the central back digital currencies are simply taking the existing monetary policy and changing the technology form factor, right? Um, what Bitcoin does is it actually is a different monetary policy. It's not a fiat inflationary type model. Um, and so ultimately what we're going to have is a competition of currencies, but it's not going to be a competition on technology. It won't be, are they digital? Are they not? Everything will be digital. Instead, what we're going to have is a competition of monetary policy. That's, I think, where we believe that the Bitcoin monetary policy is superior to central bank uh, monetary policies. And ultimately, Bitcoin will be the winner uh, and will be the next global reserve currency at some point in the future. We are going to continue this conversation. There's always more to discuss. You're 100,000 call by 2021. <laughs> and we're going to come back to that energy, the renewables. I'm going to do some digging. <laughs> Thanks, Steve Pompolano there. Thank you so much for joining us Thanks for having on me. the show. All right.